Ramsey. This is Wave 3 Listens Live. Good afternoon. Welcome to Wave 3 Listens Live. We've got a jam-packed show today. Let me give you the rundown real quickly. Uh, Doug Carfridge is here. Now, he doesn't want you to like your floor. He wants you to snuggle with your floor. He wants you to send your floor flowers. He wants you to love your floor, and he's willing to give you a cell number to prove it. Doug Corfo should be on the show a little bit later. And believe me, when people come over to the house for the holidays, they're looking at that floor. Dr. Eli Karam is here, and he is a licensed marriage and family therapist. In fact, he is the president of the Kentucky Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. There we go. I think I got it out there. You got it. <laughs> now, be before we get started, my man, real quickly, do you love breakfast? Uh, of course, who doesn't? It's the most important meal of the day, right? Thank you very yeah, much. Right. I, you see, he knows nutrition as that's, well. That's right. I love breakfast. I went to a place called Highland Morning today, and I just have to tell you, between my radio show and between this show, I always look for spots to grab a quick bite to eat. This place is excellent, and I have nothing to gain by this. They're not compensating me. I, I paid for my breakfast, but Highland Morning in the heart of the Highlands, 1416 Bardstown Road. That's good stuff, man. I'm telling you, make it on in there. Tammy, thanks for throwing that up there. That's a, I love good breakfast. All right. Yeah. And you know what I had? I had, a, I had an omelet that had um, feta cheese, basil, and tomatoes. It was tasty. Like a Greek omelet. It was good. Yeah. Kind of sort of. Yeah, with yeah. a little basil, a little more basil than usual, but it was really, really good. All right. Let's get down to business. Let's now, do it. I was looking forward to having you on today, Dr. Eli, because this is the time of year when you're going to have I, I would think some family issues. I mean, you're gonna you, in-laws are gonna be around. Uh, your your family's there. Pe presents are involved. Travels involved. So many things. So you're gonna help us out today with holiday survival tips. And before we yeah. get into those, though, real quickly, five seven one five two six three five seven one five two six three. If you have any issues related to the holidays with your family or with your spouse, there we go. Yeah, we got extended time today too. So I think we're gonna talk some holiday survival tips. And you know, it's 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 December. So a couple of things, as, as John was saying, people come together families, which even in good situations, we think of stress as ne necessarily a, a bad thing. Well, there's really kind of two kinds of stress, positive stress, which we call eustress, and, and negative stress. So even if you have a good relationship with your family, uh, this next couple of weeks uh, is, a, is a crunch time for many people, and it brings up even positive stressors. And the other thing is the end of the year. People are taking stock on their lives, where they're at, what they've done. Uh, which also brings another host of issues. So we're going to talk a lot of that today. We'll start uh, first segment. We'll get some tips for you, uh, and then we're going to have plenty of calls and emails. So please uh, uh, do call in, and uh, we'll have a dialogue about the holidays. So here's some holiday survival tips for your family. Uh, well, first of all, John, I know you're a busy guy too, so you got to set that schedule. Mm -hmm. So what we got going on is we got. Uh, office parties, we got family functions, we got recitals for, for your kids. A lot is going on and some people are trying to just put everything together and you don't know, should I go to that, should I not? And, you, and uh, one person in the family is usually responsible for setting the schedule. I say make it a family activity. Over this next couple weeks, put everything on there and then it's a dialogue about what do we need to go to, what do we feel obligated to go to, or, or what is optional. And depending on different parts of the family, uh, you know, that is a discussion. And the last you want to do is over schedule during this time of year because hopefully you're taking some time off you want to enjoy uh, your family and yourself uh, tip number two John and I were talking about last week on the show you got to set a gift budget uh, and this is very important because uh, a lot of people are overcome with the spirit of the holidays and they think bigger is better and sometimes go above their means uh, to take care of other people, which, you know, is great, but, you know, it's, as we often say, it's cliched, but it's true, it's the thought that counts. So you want to make sure, especially with your partner, uh, that you have a pretty good idea of what you can spend and what you can't and how you're going to allocate that. And, and it doesn't have to take all the joy out of it. Uh, you can still surprise people. You just want to do it within the reins of what you have uh, and what you can spend. Uh, another tip is very important is this idea of Avoid in-law intoxication. That's a trademark, Dr. Eli. Uh, <laughs> in-law intoxication. So what? Too what much I mean? of the in-laws. That's right. Uh, and you know, just like anything, uh, we think of intoxication. A nice uh, adult beverage. Uh, <laughs> You know, it can be good. A little eggnog right. in, in moderation, it can make things better. But Same things with pounding. family. That's right. Don't start pounding. And, <laughs> and a lot of times, uh, people start pounding the family in the sense that uh, if you're traveling or if you're having family coming in, you're together uh, for a prolonged period of time in a closed amount of space. And even people that you enjoy and that you love can be too much. So when we say in-law intoxication, we have a, a couple of kind of tips embedded in that. You want either by yourself or with your spouse or your partner, you want a code word or 
or something to get yourself out of there if you've had too much of your family. Uh, you don't want to get involved. A lot of people, they don't talk politics, they don't talk religion, they don't talk really heated things at the dinner table. Um, so if you create yourself some space during that week or during that holiday trip, uh, it can be a both and. You can enjoy your in-laws and you can get away with your partner. One way to do it, I'll share a personal example. Uh, my wife and I are going to Chicago. Uh, we see her in-laws. We go there a lot. It's a great town. So we will spend a couple days in the suburbs and then we will leave my uh, children uh, with, my grand with their grandparents, with my in-laws, and we'll go downtown Chicago, stay at a hotel. So we get our couple time sure. embedded and we get our family time. So like it's, it's a nice break. Uh, and again, it it's a two for one in that sense in that, uh, you know, you can spend time with your family, but also you, you don't get so uh, oversaturated that you say something you don't mean or you appear, appear agitated or aloof. Um, and you don't want you don't want to do that. Another tip we have uh, is very important is this idea of self-care, which is embedded in that. And when I say self-care, I mean. When you don't overschedule, uh, you got to create some time for yourself. And many people, they have. This is their vacation time. So treating yourself, whether it be a massage, whether it just be vegging out in front of the TV, watching bowl games, or catching up on college basketball, whatever your form of self-care is, uh, reference in our first point, that should be built into the schedule. And most people, when you're dialoguing about it with your family, you shouldn't feel bad about it. Um, and that includes time as a couple. Um, so much on this show, we talk about you know relational health and focusing on that. A couple relationship, whether you're married or not, and some people are great co-parents. They do a great, uh, but they do a, a, a less than perfect job of focusing on the couple. So you want to make sure, whether it be a date night or a special trip, you want to make sure you have that built in. And then again, the last tip uh, kind of goes without saying, but remember, you know, uh, you know, whether you're religious or not, the true sentiment of the season and uh, the idea of of giving and being around people you care about. So a lot of people, when they're overscheduled or and they're into this uh, commercialism, bigger is better, the next gift, they forget about kind of the true meaning of the season. So it's never uh, never a bad time to do that. These are all really good tips, Dr. Eli. I appreciate it. If you have any questions about the holidays, issues with your family, uh, 571-5263. We're gonna take those today with Dr. Eli. You can change the names to protect the innocent. Real quickly, you were talking about a code word or a code phase yeah. when, you've, when you've had enough of the in-laws. Yeah. I, I have a code phase that I use with my wife. I say, shoot me. <laughs> yeah. It's like, let yeah. me out of here. Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, but 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 it's. I mean, we joke, but a lot of couples do, and a lot. Of, so if you talk about that, you know, if you don't talk about that ahead of time with your partner, uh, it seems like you know, you're, especially if you're going over to your in-laws and it's, it's your your spouse's family or your girlfriend or boyfriend's family, you feel like, oh man, I'm I'm the outsider here. But if you talk about it in advance, it diffuses it, and you might not have to use the code word or the exit strategy, but a good case in case you do, um, you have it built in and your partner's not going to freak out on you after the fact. Do you have to like get down on your hands and knees and like crawl out? Is there an exit strategy? How to exit the house? <laughs> that's or right. I mean, that's like, right. It's like <laughs> or it's a nonverbal. It's a, it's a squeeze or in some cases a kick. I was like, <laughs> uh, it's sometimes too swift to kick, but it's it's some type of uh, indicator that, hey, let's let's get out of here and let's go so we can come back. But yeah. all seriousness aside, you know, and you may love your in-laws. With that being said, there there is, like you said, the, the in-law intoxication. I love that. A Dr. Eliism yeah. there. I love that because it's true. You can get too much of anyone. Yeah. And, and during the holidays, you really want to spend time with your spouse, with your kids. Um, and, and as much as you may love your mother-in-law, your sisters-in-law, whatever the case may be, enough is enough. And, and I do like that. A code yeah. word just kind of so it's not so obvious. Yeah, so subtle, I also tell people here. to remember, I mean, you can do anything for a couple of days. So, you know, maybe you have to maybe you have to change your standards. Uh, but this is not your house. Generally, you're a guest in someone else's home. You can put up with anything for a couple of days. Uh, and again, you don't want to do anything offensive or do anything to kind of uh, break the spirit of the holidays or ruin that relationship with that extended family. All right, once again, he is a licensed marriage and family therapist and he's the very best at it. Free advice, 571-5263.